they had a friendship. I don't know why their friendship fell out. Their friendship was before Diddy, I mean, before Biggie and Pop. So I don't know why they fell out. I know every girl that Tupac had, Puff wanted and got. So, all right, what happened was is that uh, I guess Pac had got whiffed that Jay-Z was in town. Well, you know he's going to do a show because Jay-Z, he doing a show. But you got to realize Jay-Z had became an enemy of Pac because I think he had said some or uh, was going to do a song with Big or whatever like that, the whole nine yards. So Jay is now Pac enemy. So it was just good business just to chill out with that. But they was trying to chill out the whole thing. They had a big meeting and Puff wouldn't send a representative or let uh, Zip or Chaz represent him in the meeting. And, 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 and then it came out. Gene Diddy's former bodyguard has been revealing a lot of explosive details about why Diddy never got along with Tupac. According to Gene, Diddy was always envious of Tupac's close relationship with Biggie. Allegedly, Diddy even wrote a million-dollar check to Eric Von Zipp to handle Tupac. Gene claims that the feds might investigate Diddy, tracking the money trail, which could potentially expose Diddy's involvement in the hit on Tupac. He said that Diddy, he was jealous of the relationship between Tupac and Big. And he also went on to say that Diddy, he wanted to be friends with Tupac, but Tupac wasn't interested. Diddy and Tupac was friends at first, bro. I remember the time me and... uh. Diddy rolled up to Pac in, uh, I think it's the, what's the name of that club? The Roxy. There was some kind of concert going on, and they was talking and everything. They had a friendship. I don't know why their friendship fell out. Their friendship was before Diddy, I mean, before Biggie and Pop. So I don't know why they fell out. I know every girl that Tupac had, Puff wanted and got. So, did he have uh, jealousy? Yeah, he had a jealousy of Pac. But I think that it was more so that he knew Big was the meal ticket. And that Pac wanted Big to be be with him with thug life but he didn't have the money at the time and when big gave him got the money from puff pot gave him the blessings to go with him but he also told big that he had to watch puff because puff was gonna rob him blind so you believe kirk burroughs when he say that you know diddy he was jealous of the relationship between tupac and big I don't know if I could say he was jealous with his relationship with Big. I just, he didn't like Pac. It's something that happened between Pac and him that he didn't like it. So if my man or somebody that I'm working with is dealing with somebody I don't like, I'm going to have a dislike for that relationship they have. I don't just think it's jealousy. I think it more was just a dislike and a hatred that Somebody I'm working with is working with somebody that I don't like anymore or I got a problem with. So you feel like it was intentional when Diddy was getting with, you know, the same woman that Tupac already had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was, I think it was, I think that he purposely went after the girls that dealt with Pac. Why do you think he did that on purpose? Because when you have an envy of someone, Remember, Puff tried to get that Juice movie and Juice, but they gave it to Pop. So when you have an envy of somebody, if you can't beat them, the closest thing you could do is have what they got. Have what, have what they had or try to get what they got. Yeah, that makes sense. And Kirk Burroughs, he also said in this interview that Diddy, he would encourage Biggie to make songs that was beefy. I don't think Kirk Burroughs was correct on that because Biggie didn't write around Puff. Big always wrote wherever he wrote at and then went to record. 
if he wrote anything or came up with some kind of concept of something. You're not going to find too many times Big and Puff was in the studio together where Big was recording. Puff may come in after the work is done and then add his little, take that, take that. Bad boy, bad boy. But Big always record because like when we were doing the, uh, the music to uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Big said, I ain't writing shit. He sat there and smoked up all their weed. And he waited till he got to New York and then came back with the song. Flipped their whole style. Big didn't ever write around nobody. Looked like Puff had no... Puff never, you know, told Big what to write and what not to write. But everyone knows Pac was perceptive. He had a keen sense of people's true nature and what they were hiding. I think he saw through Diddy and decided to distance himself from him. Ask you, what's the story behind Jay-Z being afraid to come out his hotel room because of Pac? All right, what happened was is that uh, I guess Pac had got whiffed that Jay-Z was in town. Well, you know he's going to do a show because Jay-Z, he doing a show. But you got to realize Jay-Z had became an enemy of Pac because I think he had said some or uh, was going to do a song with Big or whatever like that, the whole nine yards. So Jay is now Pac enemy, too. So Chaz Williams, who was over Black Hands, Black Hands was one of the labels who did that uh, Black Gangs, every artist in New York on. And Chaz, who is now getting into the music business, uh, has become a music executive. And he was once a former gangster who was on uh, American Gangster, BET, because they had it down, had them down for robbing 161 banks. That's what they put in their program and everything. But Chaz was a gangster in New York City that became a music executive. So he gets a phone call saying that Jay is not going to come out the room because Tupac is friend. <laughs> so he's not going to do his show. Can he make some phone calls, you understand, to um, get Pac off the bullshit. So I think he may have talked to Big D and Big D and Eric B called Suge and Suge was laughing saying that wasn't him because they tried to make it seem like it was Suge that was doing it, but it was Pac. So, um, so I guess Suge called Pac. Pac let him go ahead and do his show and everything like that. But Jay was scared to come out of his room. So that story was really true about Jay-Z being afraid to come out of his hotel room. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, no, yeah, he was scared. Probably still is scared. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. And Shook, he told Pac to chill out. Yeah, Shook told Pac to chill out. You know what I'm saying? Because see, they was trying to. So you got to realize is that it was going to call a dissension because they were trying to start Death Row East Coast, and that would have been Pac, Eric B. And you know, sent all the dudes here in New York. So then they're going to have groups coming back and forth from Cali to New York. So it was just good business just to chill out with that. But they was trying to chill out the whole thing. They had a big meeting and Puff wouldn't send a representative or let uh, Zip or Chaz represent them in the meeting. Yeah, that's a wild story. Yeah, who told you this story, if you don't mind me asking? I was there. Oh, wow. I didn't know that, man. I didn't know you was there. So you was there when Jay was scared to come out his hotel room. I had no idea, man. I used to roll with Chaz every day, bro. And, 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 and then it came out. And then it came out. Somebody else told the story. But that, I, I think it may have been Dame Dash or something like that had told the story. A lot of my stories get out, man, but they don't believe when I tell them. They believe it when they hear But also, Pac was someone you wouldn't want to cross. It's a shame that the people who shot him took him by surprise. Oh, man. And also in this article, a guy named Damien, he's a former intern at Bad Boy. He said that, you know, when Diddy and Jennifer Lopez broke up, Diddy, he had staffers kept outside, you know, MTV, TRL Studios. 
with signs, try to win Jennifer Lopez back. You know anything about that? Every word. See, what happened was <laughs> Jennifer had this personal assistant, and I don't know what she owed Puff or what Puff did for her, but he was able to call her and find out everywhere Jennifer was at. You understand? Um, she was somewhere. He sent a uh, a hundred dozen roses and was trying to get Luther Vandross there to sing for her. So I believe Damien because I was there when he was making uh, deals with the personal assistants of Jennifer Lopez and finding out where Jennifer was going to be so he could send people over there. You understand? With gifts, roses, and all this other shit. Wow. So he was really trying to win her back then? Oh, no doubt. No doubt, bro. She wasn't, she wasn't, she, she, they wasn't listening. You know what I'm saying? These guys is hard-headed, man. I used to tell people, yo, when he was dating Jennifer, I said, y'all know private eyes is following us, right? P.I.s is following us. And P.I.s would be following, following, following us. And I don't know if Jennifer had the P.I.s doing it. I don't know if Benny Medina, somebody who has some kind of relationship with Jennifer, had private eyes following us to see what Puff was doing. Crazy, man. How you feel about Biggie's mom reaction to the video? Her saying that she wanted to slap Diddy. Well, I think she wanted to slap him way before she saw that video. Big Mother wanted to slap Puff way before that. Because if you ever see her in anything that they ever gave for Big and Puff was there, she was always distanced to him. Because she probably believed after having that conversation with me that Puff played some kind of part in her son dying. Her son's death. Because why would he lie to Big's mom and say he didn't know me when all the investigators, the cops, told her, have a conversation with Gene Deal. Gene Deal gave us the information on what happened, what transpired. Why would did he tell her that he didn't know me? So she would probably want to smack his face way before that. That just gave her more and more reasons when he seen what type of person. J-Lo was allegedly a real victim of Diddy. She was reportedly forced to carry a gun for him into a New York club and ended up spending a night in jail because of what he did with the weapon. Family, I know we're doing this old school taping again and release, but this is something I think y'all going to really, really enjoy on this Sunday morning. It's a conversation with somebody that y'all love. Y'all love Mr. Gene Deal. And so this, I get a lot of conversations or I get a lot of requests in the comment sections. And man, y'all do, you and Gene need to do a sit down. You and Gene need to do an interview. And I'll be like, dang, is that we got that many new uh, people that's in the comment sections? Shit, me and John did one with him about four or five years ago. So. We decided to put this audio up. We cutting it up because it went a little longer, but we cut it up for you guys. And we decided to put it out and let y'all conversation between Gene and I uh, uh, that we had answering a lot of the questions. It's not going to be no y'all here for P Diddy and Diddy bashing or or a conversation about that. This is not the interview for this. This was all around the surrounding uh, of the identification and the, the Biggie assassination and Gene and I just talking it out like men. So, hey, Sunday morning, drink your coffee or this afternoon, it ain't no good game zone. If, unless you're in the baseball, give us 30 minutes of your time and I'll watch this interview. I think you'll learn a lot about it, about where we have our differences at, but how people can have a differences and have a decent conversation. So bomb first, we'll be back at you later on the day or definitely by first thing in the morning on Monday with some interviews because, man, we got a lot of things we're going to be covering this week.
that goddamn Keefy D getting billed up, that goddamn Wack 100 billing him out, the Kendrick Lamar situation, and all of that stuff. So peace, mom, first. Check out the Gene Deal. Uh, a good friend of mine, a little guy that uh, you all know out here in the YouTube world, Big Gene Deal just called me, and he great bless us for a few questions and answers right quick. And so uh, we got Gene Deal from the Raw Deal Show. I know what his YouTube channel is because uh, he be doubling my my, pla my little platform, doubling and triple. If y'all all know the the cooking master. <laughs> like there you go with deal. your boy. There you go with your boy, <laughs> man. What's going on, man? This is Bob first, man. Talk to my people. My boy, John. I'm sure you heard of John. No, John. Let me say what's up to my my, my people over here. Glad he asked me to come on because I don't mind doing that for him. So what's up, Reg? I appreciate it, Big G. Well, man, we ain't gonna, you know, everybody know what you and I stand on the, uh, on all the, the, the stuff that we are known for. So we just gonna just say what's up and, and talk and, and see what, what any, anybody got any questions over there? I don't have no questions to ask you about that because I already know, uh, your opinion and, and, and it makes sense. It makes sense. I, uh, and I understand why you feel that way. Uh, but, but you know, you know my opinion as well. Well, you know what, like Reg, you know, like, can nobody tell me nothing but what I saw? And I've always been adamant about what I saw and what happened that night. You and I both know that when the FBI do their investigation, they do a thorough investigation. You understand? And uh I was found credible and I told them the truth. You and I both being former law enforcement agents, we know if you lie to the FBI, you're going to get five years in oh, yeah. felony, and you're going to get five years in jail. You know, so um, I know what I saw. I know what happened. You got people coming 10, 15 years later who wasn't there, who didn't give you the same statements I gave them and I gave now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not worrying about nothing. Man, I, you know, I'm retired. I'm trying to live my life. I'm actually on vacation right now. You called me on vacation. So, you know, I'm just, like I said, I don't know how my time is going to be, and I don't know when you're leaving. So that's why I'm here. So if anybody mm -hmm. want to ask some questions, long as that ain't asking my and some old dumb bullshit, I'll answer. I ain't got no problem with that. Respect. Respect, man. Um, okay, so, uh, all right, let me hit, I'll just hit up the board and see what y'all got from Big Game. Uh, okay, um, no, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, you say, do you, come on, y'all, we know that Big Gene don't believe that Gucci was involved. Um, Gene, if you're going to tell my people what, what you believe, and, um, just so they won't have to keep asking that question about Gucci and all of that, because I know what you believe, and, um, if you can just explain out to the people what you believe, so they won't have to keep asking that question. I believe the same Muslim who walked up to me, and Puff, that you and I both know, and your man said that he saw the picture, the picture that they showed me the night, the, the day that they came to my job and we was in the hotel, of me, Puff, and the Muslim, and his face was messed up. That same Muslim was the name, I guess the name is Amir Muhammad or Harry Phillips or whatever, walked up to me and Puff Cross. Five minutes later, he walked in, uh, and after he walked up to me and Puff's car, he walked in the direction, uh, to the corner. I didn't see him no more. I didn't keep my eye on him. Lil C, when we got to the hospital, Lil C said, a Muslim killed Big. And I said he had a, uh, and I, uh, Paul offered, uh, one of the security guys said, a Muslim, I said, yo, did he have a blue shirt, I mean, a blue suit? White shirt, blue bow tie, peanut looking in. He said, yeah, Gene, how you know? I said, he walked up to our car first. So that's the same statement I gave everybody. That's the same statement. I'm sticking with it, and I know what I saw, and I know what happened. Okay. When has Gene Deal ever lied? I mean, Diddy worked hard to discredit him for his court statement, but Gene still has a significant impact on this platform and you. And you and I both know that when I said, if I'm wrong, and I, I told you to tell Greg Caden, if I'm wrong, prove me wrong, 
show the picture. He said they had the picture. Am I wrong or am I right, Rich? He said that on, on our stream uh, that he had the picture. He said All that right. The so, the who we wrong? I get the picture, and um, I didn't get the picture. I got a right. picture, but you said that wasn't the correct picture. That wasn't the picture you were talking about. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, he know the picture I'm talking about. Yeah. You understand? They know the picture I'm talking about. They showed me the picture, and they told me, listen to me, and Greg Caton was had nothing to do with this investigation uh uh way back when in ninety seven when Correct. it came to my job. Right. You understand? Know yeah. He had nothing to do with that investigation. The cops, cats, and all of them told me, We're gonna fix the photo and bring you back out there or we be back out there in two weeks. Now, they never came back out there and they never brought me there. The next time I heard it was doing a deposition for Miss Wallace. You understand? So now, if they were interested in getting the, the 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 killer big, they had the photo. They had a law enforcement agent who said he saw him walk in that direction. You understand? So now, if they was interested, they would have took care of that right then and there. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I got a question. Defro East wanted to ask you. He said, could you ask uh, Big G if uh, Michael Clark Duncan was supposed to be the bodyguard of Big on March the 9th, as he claimed, or any story? He made, yeah, he on? made that up. Okay, <laughs> he made that up. Okay, yeah, he I heard that up. I'll give it to you, 100. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know Michael, I know him before. He went to, we went to Alcorn State together. Okay. He put a freshman on me, like, trying to get at me, because uh, he's from Chicago. He used to mess with my of my dude, Maurice Bowling, him used to be real cool. He had this freshman come at me, Tommy Tyre, and I had to put it on him in the lunchroom. Let me ask you this, Big Game. Um, was Amir Muhammad, when did you first um, see the picture of Amir? What year did they show you that? That picture? They never, they never showed me the picture of Amir Muhammad. Oh, okay. So you never yeah. identified Amir or Muhammad. They, ne they, they, ne they never showed me the picture. The, uh, they never showed me Amir Muhammad. The LAPD never showed me Amir Muhammad. Okay. Okay. That's, so that should clear up a lot of questions that people have that I'm seeing. Okay. Um, John, kind of help me with the board because it's it seems like people asking good questions. Okay. And I don't want to miss them. Yeah. Somebody said. Um, Ask him why he didn't circle Amir in the lineup. I don't know. I don't know what that's. He just said he didn't never. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, See, listen here, man. Listen, here. this is this this they this they try to portray, and and the reason you know, and Reggie told me your man, uh, Katie used to talk in the whole night. We don't need to talk because he blatantly told a lie. Mm. You understand mm. when he said that I. Picked out. I said, this guy, this guy, they look like him, but it's not him. The one that Lil C's did, the, the, the facial structure is not, uh, is not strong enough. You understand? It's not him. And I had a lawyer there with me. You understand? I had a lawyer, the Eloise nurse. She is the, the governor's David Patton, one of her, his lawyers. Mm -hmm. She was there with me taking notes in the whole nine yards. And she could attest to that I never picked nobody up out that lineup. So when Greg told that lie to make his his program look good, you understand? That's why I cannot with him. And Red, that's why I told you I wouldn't put you. Yeah. You know, uh, listen, me and you could me and you've had some good man, conversations, man, Red. Man, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you told you, you you told me like 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 you you thought that, that was Keefe D at the moment in back of the soul train that you pulled your gun out on. And I told that was gutter. That was key gutter. And ever since then, I've been correcting that. If you've been watching anything, I, I say I correct it all the time and say, hey, right. but you set me straight on that. And, and, right. and say, yeah. Because so, yeah, he, he wasn't with them like that, you know, right there at that particular time. Even, but the whole thing good. about it is, man, a lot of people come here and they want to, they, they want to take, they want to, they, they want to take information that people didn't do a good job with it when they first had it in the first place. And then they want to try to make it something like, like I, the shit that I talk about is that I know personally. And the shit I talk about Pac 
is somebody who was with them. See, Kiki D ain't never tell y'all it was some other guys with them who they spared off when they seen Pac them. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It was yeah. some other guys that was with them that they spared off when they seen Pac them. They said, oh, there go them niggas right there. Oh, yeah, we're going to go holler at them. I right, we'll see y'all back. And they was right there when that happened. You understand? Yeah. So Kiki D know that. And Red, you know, and I, you and I both know. I came to you, and you ain't tell me. I told you. I said, Red, you know there was two guns in that car, right? And he said, and the first thing you said to me was, yo, how you know that? Mm-hmm. How did you find out about that, Jim? I said, some of my people told me like that. Man. And they told me the situation. Well, you Pop, said, yeah. He never got to pull those guns out, though. Let me just no, he that. never got to. Okay. It, 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 he never got to. But okay. if you if you know you going if you going if you going to have a situation and stuff like that and somebody make a move like that and you got somebody in the back who's supposed to handle something they're going to do what they supposed to do. Yeah. Point yeah. blank. Yeah. And then you know people try to get me to yo this conspiracy this thing. man I know what my man told me. He told us that that night and when he came back from Vegas he 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 demonstrated what he saw to us. Yeah. You understand? And, yeah. he, and he got mad at me because I said his name. And I said, but don't nobody know who you are, bro. Yeah. I said your name, but nobody don't mo- nobody knows who you are. I never gave him a, a first or a last name. I gave him your street name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, well cool. Um, um, let's talk about KPD a little bit because we brought him up, though. In the whole nine yards, and, and and I've heard, you know, man, I, man, my people, this, that, and the third, you, that's the same book. Okay. But for me to say that, you know, that Puff uh, would orchestrate anything with this kid to do anything against Shug and, and Tupac, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say that. But I did hear Puff say something. I just thought that, like at the time, it was some kind of self fulfilling prophecy. He was saying when he said, "I don't give the Pac got to die, I don't give the Big got to die." Mm. Or should go to jail. Mm. He was just that mad after that soul train. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, you yeah. know, to say that I ever heard him, you know, to do something like that now. Okay. Have I heard the bullshit? Yeah, I heard the bullshit. Mm-hmm. But I only heard it with around D Mac or whatever like that. Even when okay. I tried to tell him the night that Big got killed, man, we shouldn't go nowhere because two, two or three different gangsters told me that they was coming to get us. Mm. So, um, he said, yo, man, we lock and load together. I said, nigga, I don't see none of y'all locking and load. <laughs> what you talking about? Listen, you the only one. Yeah. 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 Hey, um, do you believe, uh, what, what's your belief on Tupac? I know you don't like to speculate. It's like I don't like to really speculate on big because I wasn't there. Um, but what, what's your opinion about Pac? Do you believe the KKD story or what? Well, you got to look at this. You got to go with behavior and you got to listen to what transpired. And, and, and what people say, you know, like, I don't believe that TPD then was going to kill Pop. And I told you, I don't believe that they was going. I believe, like, like they said, Orlando Anderson wanted a prayer one with him. Mm-hmm. You understand? And I believe when they roll up, there was enough time to, yo, what's up, man? You know, Bob, they did people. And, you know, Pac being who he was and the gangster position he had always, uh, uh, the gangster portrayed. position he had always, you know, uh, portrayed and everything like that. When he saw a dude and they start smacking off, it's just something quick that happened that it, 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 they would have thought about it or something like that. It probably wouldn't even went down the way it did. Okay. 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 One more question because I, I heard you say your, your, your people looking at you crazy. Um, little C's and, and um, Little Kim Beef. You got anything you can speak on that or you don't really like speaking on that? They beef? Yeah, are they cool now today? Are they yeah, I heard it, I heard it made up and everything like that. That was something that you know because they didn't have the right people in their ear at the time. It shouldn't have even never went down there. Like Lil C's is a kid. You know, he was a kid at the time. Somebody should have went to him and say, "See, you don't have to say nothing. Invoke your Fifth Amendment right and don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. They can hold you into contempt until the trial is over. But after the mm-hmm. trial is over, you're going to get out of jail." Okay. All right. Lil C's 
said, all Lucy said was, yeah, I know Damian Butler. Yeah, I know Kim. No, he knows something like that. He, what he said, he told the truth. But if you don't have the right people talking to you and your legal team is stepping, they just looking for cash in a cost situation amongst people like that. Little Kim, you know what I'm saying? They say she kept it gangster and stuff like that. She messed up her career by going to jail. Yeah. You understand? She did not have to go to jail. Mm. They had pictures. They had receipts. They had film. They knew she knew Damien Buck. They knew she knew him. Yeah, I know. Mm. She ain't said nothing wrong. But see, mm. our, 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 our ideology of a people, you know, everybody talk about this snitch, this rat, and all this other bullshit. Get the fuck up out of here. If they tell me you know Reggie, I tell you, I know of Reggie, you know what I'm saying? We mm. talk on the telephone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You call it every one of You can say the same thing about me. I'm not going to sit there and, you know, F up my life with something I know they already know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got I got one one for you, Gene, if you don't mind. Um, wh- were you with Biggie and or Puffy when you found out about the Tupac shooting in Vegas? And if so, what was your reaction? Uh-huh. What was their reaction? I was, on, I, was on, I, was, I was on 112th Street. Okay. okay. We got a call as soon as it happened. Okay. And what was... I told you, you some of our people was with them. Okay. We was like, oh, sh- it's about to be on and popping now. Mm. That's what we said. Okay. But but you never heard what, what Puff's reaction or anything was when he heard about it? Well, big reaction was so tough, he got smoked out of his mind and went through a car, car window. Mm. Big, was, big was actually devastated behind that because he either...